I have been on a eternal search to find a way to mine crypto without needing to buy any kind of expensive hardware. Traditional crypto mining requires proof of work, which means it's really only profitable if you have a pretty fairly high powered GPU to mine with, which can cost up to thousands of dollars. I've looked into the alternatives, for example, helium and mining with helium hotspot miners. Helium works off of proof of coverage instead, which essentially works off of network work connectivity. When I found out about Helium, I was like, wow, <laughs> finally something that doesn't require an expensive GPU. And then I went to find out how much Bobcat miners cost, <laughs> especially on resale like eBay as well. It's still pretty damn expensive. But then I found out about Nodal and Nodal Cash. And the great thing about Nodal is that instead of having to buy an expensive GPU or even a hotspot miner that costs hundreds of dollars, you can instead start doing this absolutely 100% for free today with just your own mobile device that you already have. Today we're going to talk about Nodal, Nodal Cash, and the entire project itself. Then I'm going to guide you through how to actually set up Nodal and a Nodal tutorial in order to start mining Nodal Cash. And then after that, I'm going to give you my nodal review and my overall thoughts about the project and where I can see nodal cash going in the future. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's clarify some stuff up real quick. What is nodal? Well, there are two things here. There's nodal and then there's nodal cash. And Nodal is a private company that actually brought Nodal Cash to life. Nodal Cash is a cryptocurrency, the reward that you guys get from mining with your phone. And when I say mining, I mean mining. I'll get to that soon, exactly what I mean. <laughs> well, in order to explain that, we need to talk about how Nodal and Nodal Cash works. So similarly to Helium, where you're actually using the Helium platform and it's kind of like a connectivity based cryptocurrency, you also have Nodal Cash over here, which is based off a concept called proof of connectivity. In order to mine Nodal Cash, you need some kind of device that is Bluetooth enabled and can have some kind of connectivity to the internet. So what that means is that if you have any kind of like Android or iPhone phone, you should be ready and set to go with mining for nodal cash. And this is actually how they reward everyone in the network as well. So there are a lot of IoT devices out there that the nodal team has around the world or other sensors that they've worked with certain companies with. And the more you move around these IoT devices, the more you connect to them with your Bluetooth, you get their data and you send them to the internet using your phone. And because you did this work for them, you effectively get rewarded for that in nodal cash. If this doesn't make quite enough sense to you yet, let me try to simplify it as much as possible to where even someone like me can understand. <laughs> so imagine that there's a bunch of IoT devices out there. Some of these devices, they're not directly connected to the internet. And the reason why people build these kind of devices that don't connect to the internet right away is because it's as a cost saving measure and a space saving measure. Because if they did connect to the internet, they would need to create these devices with much bigger batteries. But these IoT devices do connect over Bluetooth and especially Bluetooth low energy. And what this effectively is, is a lower energy consumption version of Bluetooth that can still transfer data back and forth. And some miner out there, like you or me, who is contributing to this network and trying to mine nodal cash, turns their app on in the background of their phone. And whenever they pass by one of these devices, they will communicate over BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, to the IoT device. The IoT device sends over the data to the phone encrypted, so the miner, you or I, can't actually read that data ourselves. <laughs> And then it gets uploaded to the internet if our phone is currently connected to either Wi-Fi or some kind of data. And finally, Nodal rewards this contributor to the network by providing them some Nodal cash. That's a simplified version right there, and that's pretty much how I understand how it works. I might have gotten it slightly wrong, or I might have oversimplified it a little bit too much, but I hope that's at least 90% correct. 
So if this is something that sounds interesting for you and something that you want to contribute to, let me go ahead and show you exactly how to get set up mining nodal cash yourself. And the reason why I keep on putting quotes over mining is because it's not really mining in the traditional sense of that's your solving some kind of complex problem. Instead, you're providing a genuine service to nodal and the app developers on nodal and you're getting rewarded for that service of uploading data to the internet. But for the sake of the video, whenever I talk about nodal and nodal cash, I'm just gonna say mining to simplify it for you guys, okay? <laughs> we don't have to get overly technical over here. So I hope you guys have your phones out and ready because we're about to get started mining with nodal cash. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started mining. We're gonna go to our app store or our play store and type in N-O-D-L-E, nodal. It's almost like noodle, but without the extra O. <laughs> go ahead and search that up. It was the first result there anyway, but did you mean noodle? No, I did not mean noodle. And the images should look something similar to this. Nodal cache. Let's install that. Okay, we are installed. Let's open. And it's just gonna tell you a little bit about what Nodal believes in. They don't track us and they don't sell our data out to people. Please keep in mind, this isn't like the Facebook app over here or anything. <laughs> we're just helping Nodal connect to the internet over here. So continue. And if we're first starting out, we're gonna want to create an account. But for example, if you had a bunch of different phones and you wanted to mine with nodal with all of these phones at the same time you're gonna to want to click on the import account instead since we're starting up fresh create an account and you are now ready to start earning nodal cash let's click start there's actually gonna be a lot of small things that you need to make sure are correct on your phone before you get started though for example nodal cash app needs location permission so let's go ahead and click allow location okay and then allow I don't actually have location enabled so let's enable that and I also so don't have Bluetooth on, so let's turn that on. Enable Bluetooth. Of course, the Bluetooth is gonna be the most important one because we absolutely need Bluetooth connectivity in order to talk to these IoT devices. And as you can see, it's already giving us a bunch of packets over here. And pretty much, if you see that this line is squiggly, that means you know that your nodal cache is mining right now. Let's go over a quick rundown of how to actually navigate through this app though. And for this section, I'm gonna go over to my other account where I already have nodal cache mined. So this right here is my actual nodal cache on my real phone that I carry around with me. And you can see that I actually have a nodal cache reward balance right there. Of course, when you're first starting off with your account, you're not going to have anything in it at all. You have to actually wait till you get sent nodal cache to your balance and it should take you a little bit less than a day to start getting rewarded. Once you do get rewarded, you can go ahead and click on your balance up here, and you can see all of the rewards that you've gotten for nodal cash. Let's go back, top left corner. Over here in the top middle, this button over here, it actually reveals your public key. And this is what you can use to send over to people if you want them to send you some nodal cash that they earn themselves. So for example, if you guys want to send me a tip or something, I can go ahead and copy this public key. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in the description down below. If you guys want to and you appreciate what I'm doing for you guys over here, I definitely love to see if sending nodal cash actually works with this app. <laughs> Let's go back out. And speaking of sending and receiving, we can click this button down here at the very bottom. And using this, we can send out to other people if we have access to their public key. For example, I can send out 0 0.001 to whoever's public key over here. And if any of you guys actually get set up with your own nodal cache, and you guys want me to send you a little bit of my own nodal cache in order to test out the sending and receiving function, go ahead and leave your public keys in the description below. I, I really hope YouTube doesn't automatically delete those public keys in the description because I know their anti-spam software is super complicated. <laughs> but go ahead and try it out and if it works out, I'll send you guys some nodal cash. Going back out of this, 
Top right, we have notifications. We don't have any particular notifications we want to view. So let's go over to the top left. At top left is going to be incredibly important for you guys if you guys want to actually earn more nodal cash. So let's click on that. And the first setting that you see over here, extremely important. Let's click on this. It's talking about the earning mode that we want to set for nodal cash. Eco mode, expert mode, and ludicrous mode. <laughs> and it just gets progressively better and better for you the higher modes that you select over here. So if you really wanted to go crazy and start earning more, you can select ludicrous mode over here and you're going to be able to earn more nodal cash at the expense of some more of your battery being used. At least that's what the nodal team tells you. For me personally, I feel like there's hardly a difference between expert ludicrous and eco, but I might not just be keeping my eyes on it as much. Personally, if I kind of just want to have it in the background of my primary phone, I'm just going to go ahead and click eco mode. Next are your settings for wallet settings. For example, if you wanted to back up your private key, you don't have to worry about this. If you're kind of concerned that you might lose your phone and you might consequently lose your nodal cash, I would highly suggest you go through this backup phrase thing over here. But otherwise, it's not important for you to earn nodal cash right away. Moving on for your app settings over here, this is something that you should definitely click on okay click on this because because both of these settings are going to be super important for you to, to customize your nodal cash earning for example the first setting over here wi-fi offloading this setting will actually help you identify whether you want to be able to use your data and by data i mean your 4g or 5g in order to send this nodal iot data to the internet if you don't have an unlimited data plan on your carrier i would highly suggest you click this setting over here and turn it on otherwise you're gonna get charged from your data carrier but if you have a data plan that gives you unlimited data then go ahead I don't really care that much and I'm fine with uploading the IOT data even with my 4g this other one over here ignore battery optimization that one's also important if you want to earn more nodal cash of course it's going to use more battery though if you turn it on so keep this in mind now here's an important thing that you should know as well when you're thinking about battery optimization as well. For some phones, nodal cache will still be optimized in the background, which is not necessarily what you want because you want it to use that battery in the background in order to earn you more nodal cache. If you've been keeping nodal cache in the background and you don't seem to be earning that much money, chances are, even though you do have this setting enabled, there's something in your phone that's causing the app to be optimized anyway. So something I would suggest for Samsung users, for example, or Android, Android users go ahead and go to your top bar and you see this power saving mode right here make sure that's not selected so that's off you might also be able to find it in the settings under power saving mode or something about battery and make sure that thing is off right there pretty much you want to make sure that nodal cache is not being put to sleep whenever you have the app in the background of your phone and if you do this you should be good to go and starting to earn nodal cache So I gave you guys a quick rundown and tutorial on how to get started with nodal cache. But now, what is my nodal cache review? My nodal review. Do I see potential in the future of nodal cache? Well, let's actually talk about the mining of it first. What do I think about that? So here's some notes on my own personal experiences with mining on nodal cache, okay? So of course, if you know me, I went ahead and went straight for the ludicrous mode on nodal cache and i noticed that doing this really did use quite a lot of battery in the background of my phone i don't know if you guys know this but for android phones most of you guys have power settings and you can actually see which apps use the most amount of battery when you're using your phone on a day-to-day -day basis and so i pulled up the charts on which apps were really draining my battery a bunch and nodal cache was straight number two on the most draining apps on my phone second to youtube which i would expect youtube would use a lot anyway because my phone's actually active of videos playing and audios playing too <laughs> but that surprised me like wow nodal is really 
really using a lot of energy in the background if I'm going ludicrous mode over here. <laughs> so it's not as unintrusive as I would have originally thought, but I should have expected that for ludicrous mode, honestly. <laughs> the thing is with ludicrous mode as well, I feel like I didn't earn as much as I thought I would have as well. And I really tried to be a little bit more experimental with this nodal challenge as well. I thought I wasn't earning that much in nodal cash, so I decided to actually go around with my phone in the city, you know, where a bunch of other people are, and I'm assuming a bunch of other IoT devices are as well, and I couldn't seem to earn as much as I thought I would. So I'm guessing that a lot of these people who are earning pretty well with nodal cash, the people who have like 10 to 50 to 200 nodal cash in their accounts, they're probably doing it with several different phones, at least that's what I'm guessing. So I wouldn't expect to earn that much nodal cash if you're just starting out with the process. We should also address the fact and the elephant in the room that is that nodal cash is not listed on any kind of cryptocurrency exchange so far. And this is a huge point over here, okay? But it can either be looked at as a glass half full situation and a glass half empty situation. Let's actually talk about the glass half empty first. So it's obviously clear that if you're mining with nodal cash and you're providing connectivity to nodal, you're not immediately going to be able to profit off of this. Yes, nodal cash is not listed on any kind of crypto exchange yet. So the value of nodal cash is truly what you guys think it is. What do you think nodal cash is worth? To some people, they see a lot of value in it and a lot of potential in it. But some people also see absolutely no value in it because it's not listed on any kind of exchange yet. Now, what is the glass half full situation? Well, obviously this is a very new project. This is something brand new, okay? And if you think of it from the perspective of being a new project, you are entering on the ground floor level of a brand new cryptocurrency. So hypothetically, there is a lot of great potential for the value of nodal cash to go up in the future. Of course, crypto skeptics will always say that there's potential for it to be absolutely nothing as well. <laughs> but we're thinking glass half full over here, okay? <laughs> Another good glass half full point is that mining nodal cash is it actually costs you nothing but time and a little bit of battery on your phone. So if the value of nodal cash actually ends up being pretty much worthless, which I'm highly doubting to be honest, you pretty much would lose absolutely nothing anyway. So what do you have to lose? <laughs> now here's something very important to think about, about the price of nodal cash as well, all right? If I am providing connectivity to nodal on the speculation that they'll list a crypto on a kind of crypto exchange in the future, then we have to start asking ourselves these important questions. One, do I believe in the nodal project? Two, do I have faith in the future of the project? And these are the two questions that we should ask to see if it's really worth to mine nodal cash with our phone. So let's discuss that right now. Let's actually talk about the future of nodal cash, okay? So the nodal team, they're actually already working with companies trying to innovate in their sector. There's this great TechCrunch video that actually has some members of the nodal team explaining exactly what's going on with the project as well. Another interesting thing that the nodal team is actually working on is something called the M1 nodal social distancing module. And what this pretty much is, is a device that you attach to yourself that allows you to notify you if you're too close to a certain person. <laughs> It'll detect the distance between two people pretty much and figure out if they're too close. And they're using the same exact kind of Bluetooth low energy systems that they're they're using for nodal cash as well. So as you can see, they're also working on hardware products instead of just only software stuff. Another thing that we should probably bring up is, are there concepts out there that already exist that are comparable to nodal and nodal cash? What kinds of things out there allow for Bluetooth low energy communication? Well, for example, there's things like Amazon Sidewalk, Tile, Apple Find My. So you can see that a bunch of these huge companies, they're already trying to adopt this technology themselves, right? So there is huge potential in this, but there's also a huge competition as well. And that begs the question, how does Nodal and Nodal Cash actually stand out from the competition? Well, we've already gone over exactly how some 
someone like you or I can contribute to the nodal network. And this is exactly why I think nodal is definitely different from the competition because nodal actually is the first of its kind to reward its users for contributing to the network instead of forcing them to contribute to the network. It's giving power back to the people. And that's why I think this project is so awesome. If you guys like this tutorial, rundown, and analysis of Nodal, I would definitely appreciate a like on this video. If you guys are still on the fence if you should install the Nodal app or not, I highly urge you guys to just check it out, install it for maybe like a week, keep it in the background of your phone, and if it's really truly too intrusive for you, then go ahead and install it. But otherwise, you might be surprised where Nodal and Nodal Cash takes you in the future. And with that said, my name's Ted and let's get this bread.